Hello everyone, my name is Mark. Um, I'm making this video today to demonstrate some wireless packet capture. Um, and uh, here's the point of the video. Um, I recently attended the CWNB conference in New Orleans and at that conference they had some excellent speakers. Um, first one I wanna talk about is Peter McKenzie and uh, he had a great presentation on wireless uh, packet capture and analysis. Another presenter was G.T. Hill, uh, and during one of his during his talk, he spoke a lot about creating content for the wireless community, and he wanted to focus on particularly uh, creating videos. And I figured rather than putting a blog together with some screen captures, I would make a video of this process. And uh, another person I want to talk about, not a presenter at CWNP, but uh, a resource to the community is Mike Albano. And he's put together this page here, which is a list of the capabilities of, of popular wireless clients. Um, so to contribute to this list, you have to do a packet capture of an association request from a client. Uh, to an access point. And uh, I recently got a new smartphone, a Motorola G4, and I wanted to see what it does and uh, what its capabilities are. So uh, here we go. So I learned what you can do with uh, Cisco access points is you can put them into what's called sniffer mode, and you could have over-the-air packets directed to a capture device. So let's take a look at my wireless controller. So here I have a wireless controller and I have an access point that's placed into sniffer mode. So I'll you, show you what that looks like. Here's my AP that's in sniffer mode. And it's under the general tab for the details of the AP. The AP mode type is set to sniffer instead of the normal local or flex connect mode. Uh, changing the AP mode will cause a reboot. So I didn't want to start the process with taking an AP in local mode and putting it in sniffer just to save time. I've got an access point that's already in sniffer mode. Now, where you send the data from the sniffer is defined under the radio settings. So uh, I'll take a look at the 5 gigahertz side here, 802.11a, n, and ac. And let's find that uh, access point again. Note that when the AP is in sniffer mode, it doesn't run clean air. Go to configure. OK, so. I've got sniffer channel assignment. Uh, you can enable it by checking the box here. And you have to specify what channel you want to sniff on. I'm going to sniff on channel 64. The reason I'm going to sniff on channel 64 is because the uh, access, there's a AP in local mode near me, and that's the AP that my phone is going to associate to once I get connected. And here's the IP that I'm going to send the data to. This is my laptop. Okay, I don't think I made any changes, but I'll just go ahead and apply. Okay, great. So now to actually do the capture, I've got Wireshark here in the background. And we're going to do a packet capture with a filter. Um, the, there's a nice Cisco support article on this and how you can, on setting up an AP in sniffer mode. And the data stream comes from UDP port 5555 and it goes to UDP port 5000. So I can just filter out just that data by putting in the capture filter UDP port 5000. And I'm going to capture on my ethernet here. Okay, so a lot of data flying by there. Now, I know you can't see this right now, but what I'm, what I'm going to do here is go to my wire, wireless device, and I'm gonna get it to associate. Now, one of the things I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna, uh, on my Wi-Fi device, I'm gonna make sure that it's connecting only on five gigahertz. So that way I know for sure that I'm connecting on that band. And uh, I can go ahead and turn off my Wi-Fi, turn it back on, and it'll connect to a defined network and preferred network. So my, my device is already associated, connected, and got an IP now. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this capture. Uh, really didn't expect to see 
17,000 packets, so I guess somebody is on, on uh, my 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi nearby. And so you know here that the, in the capture that it's just showing UDP, that it really uh, doesn't know what type of traffic this is. So I need to uh, filter some of this out. So what I'll do is, um, well, actually, it's not, not filtered out, but um, I need to um, decode it properly. So here's a frame that looks like it was a, captured as a result of the Wi-Fi traffic because it's from port 5555 to port 5000. I'm going to right-click on that, that packet and go to decode as to get Wireshark to display this as a, an actual 802.11 uh, frame and change it from none. And from the Cisco support article, I learned that what I want to change this to is the protocol peak remote. And I'll OK it. And now you can see, oh, that, that was a beacon frame from the access point. So still, I got 17,000 packets to search through here, so I need to utilize a filter. So I'm going to go to a display filter and click on expression here in Wireshark, and it brings up the expression builder. So one of the things that you see here is 802.11 for wireless. But this isn't what I'm really looking for. I think it's going to be IEEE 802.11. And if not, we got a shortcut that we can take here. There it is, 802.11 IEEE 802 wireless, 802.11 wireless LAN. And we're going to filter for a particular type of packet. So we want to see a WLAN, uh, WLAN, pardon me, just got a scroll. Frame control field. And we have wireland frame type. And we also have under net wireless WLAN type subtype. So I'm going to build a filter on WLAN frame control type subtype, and I'm going to look for an association request. And I'll apply that filter. Yeah, there we go. So out of all those 17,000 packets, there was only two of them in my field here that were an actual association request. And here's my Motorola G4. So let's get big here and take a look. And this is where we can actually see the information about the client that would be useful in Mike Albano's clients page. Um, see the supported rates, transmit power capability, minimum 13, max 17, the supported channels list. The MCS or HT capabilities, we can see that the Moto G4 supports 40 megahertz fields, but it's only got one spatial stream. So this is a device that can go up to MCS7. So now what I can do is I can export this packet capture um, by going to File and say Export Specified Packets and just change my field from change it. Make sure that this radio button is selected to displayed and not all captured packets and just give it a name. And then I could upload that to Mike's website so he could add it to his client's list. So I hope that you found this useful uh, as a, a way to learn how you could use some of the Cisco equipment to do a wireless packet capture over the air. Uh, I know that I was uh, really surprised that this capability was in there and really, uh, really excited about the uh, ability to do this. Uh, thanks for watching.